Here's the finished product of what we're creating in this tutorial, Flash CS3 and CS4 tutorial. You can press Control Enter and we'll look at it. And what I've created is a uh, image fade for our forum users. One of our forum users requested tutorial on how to fade images in and out from one to another. And I added a feature of when you put your mouse over that, it'll stop it wherever it is in that sequence see how you can see the church and the swamp together there and when you put your mouse when your mouse leaves it it'll resume from where it was so I can stay and look at a picture as long as I like as long as my mouse is on top of it and once my mouse leaves it it'll just resume its flowing showing all the images This Flash and ActionScript 3 tutorial comes courtesy of our forums, and it's a tutorial request in right here. How to how make image? Uh, the title is how make image fade into next image Flash CS3. And he says I've been searching on how to make a movie in Flash, or he meant movie clip in Flash uh, CS3, where an image fade into another image, which fade into a third image, and so on. How is this possible? Thanks for any help. Could you provide me with a tutorial, action script, etc.? It would be really great. Sincerely, Eric. And then Sing123 came in and gave great advice and really uh, nailed the method, but he didn't go all the way in describing the method. And uh, actually, uh, so I said uh, that I would bang out a little tutorial on it and uh, because it's very simple to do. So that's what we're going to show you how to do in Flash CS3, and uh, I'm going to be working in ActionScript 3 because at the end, towards the end, I'm going to add a little bit of code to make the uh, the movie clip, the transitional movie clip, stop when the user's mouse goes over it, and then resume when the user's mouse leaves it. Okay, so let's click Flash ActionScript 3 file. Now we have a new uh, ActionScript 3 file opening here, and what I'm going to do is go into fireworks and I have fireworks CS4 open and here's where I'm going to assemble the, the three images that I'm going to use in this example but you can use 10, 12, however many images you want so I'm going to go to file, import and let's see, let's go to my pictures my pictures and I'm going to start with some really big ones because you guys might have some really large images that you might need to know how to get small really quick and throw into flash and that's the workflow I'm gonna show you how to do right now so let's just pick uh, this one looks good let's import that one looks good and they're huge see how big they are if I zoom out humongous let's import one more let's get a nice one then I like this swampy one. Okay, so they should all three be the same dimensions. So I can highlight all three. See, I zoomed out by pressing Control and I use my mouse wheel in Fireworks to zoom in and out on my canvas. And so I highlight all three by dragging and select all three. And then I'm going to, oops, highlight all three and then hit the scale tool then once you can zoom out and then uh, just scale them to the size that you're going to want them in flash and that looks good to me and those are uh, looks like they're about 459, 351 let's make them a little bit smaller that's great and this is good for like your home page you see a lot of home pages with a flash image transition uh, like image fade in and out effects and so that's what we're gonna do. Let's grab this first one here. Now let's grab this one first. And now I have they're all optimized pretty much to be sent right into Flash. You can just press Control C or Control X, whichever one you want. I'm gonna use Control C and then go into Flash. Now I've got that picture in my clipboard, so I can just be on this uh, frame, this keyframe here in layer 1 and press control V and you'll see Flash is going to import it automatically from Fireworks 
and let's say import bitmaps to maintain appearance and that's fine uh, you, for the text I don't have any text so it doesn't matter and we'll bring it as a movie clip press ok and there it is now it's a movie clip so that means inside of it is the bitmap image itself what it did is it nested it into a movie clip automatically so this is going to be the start so let's go ahead and in the library where it says copy one let's just name rename that my image one really doesn't uh, matter what is named in the library I just do that so we we know what it is you know now you want to take that on the root timeline the scene main scene and convert to a symbol I'm gonna make this a movie clip symbol and this movie clip is going to be the container that's going to hold the transition of movie clip. So we'll name it uh, image. Oops, image fade container clip. Image fade con container clip. Registration top left movie clip. Okay. Now we have image fade container clip which doesn't need an instance name for this example and if you go inside of it there's my image one now we're inside of the main container now what we want is to create a layer let's say images now let's create a new layer on top we'll call this uh, action script 3.0 and you can be using ActionScript 2.0 the, the code methods would be very similar and you'll see my code method for ActionScript 3 and you'll say oh I know how to do that in ActionScript 2 that's easy okay so uh, now what we're gonna do is bring in the other images well first we're gonna let's set up the transition first it's an easier method to set up the transition first and then swap out the images and I'll show you why okay so you really don't need any action script for a basic image fade and I'll I'll show you how and I'll show you why in a sec let me set up this timeline let's go to maybe frame first let's set the frame rate here to about 28 to get a nice animation on our fade in and out so we're gonna have this one display for 50 frames let's say 50 frames actually we don't even need it that high, 24 would be good enough you can make it higher, the higher you make it the smoother your animations look but the bulkier your file will be sometimes okay so let's go to frame 50 press F6 make a keyframe on that images layer, let's just lock the action scripts layer so we don't put anything on it by accident now we can uh, say we're gonna have the fade let's make a good dramatic fade so let's go 30 frames out from 50 and press F6 again make another keyframe now let's go let's see the fade will happen right there in between hmm, let me think for a second how the easiest way to do this would be Yeah, it'd probably be best to just layer it. Image 2. So I pressed insert layer and created two new layers. I'm going to rename them the appropriate image. Image 1, image 2, image 3. So now image 1 is set to fade out at frame, at frame 50 to fame to frame 80 so we can go ahead and do that now create motion tween and fade it out go down alpha down to the color selection alpha drag it down to zero so you have zero alpha it means it turns invisible as uh, it goes from frame 50 to frame 80 there's a little tween there now all we have to do is bring the next image in and bring it faded in at the same time so press uh, on image 2 layer press 
F6 on on uh, keyframe, make a keyframe on frame 50. Sorry, <laughs> and then uh, let's bring that next image in. So let's go back to fireworks. And say we want this one next. Control C. Go back into flash. Control V on that layer in that keyframe. And we'll just put it the same coordinates. 0, 0, see X and Y of this first one. So let's just put that at 0. Very easy. 0 and 0. So now they're at the same exact position. Now let's make another keyframe here and fade this one in. So I press F6, made a new keyframe on 80, and then I go to create motion tween. Now this one has to be invisible at frame 50. So we go to alpha 0. Now watch what happens when I drag. It just fades from one image to the next. And now you just make the image 2 last for 50 frames to the visible eye. 8 to 130. Press F6 here. Make a new keyframe. And fade it out on uh, 160. So you can create motion tween. And go to alpha. Fade it out. So the next one, you know, needs to come in right here. So on image 3 layer, let's press and make a keyframe, F6, and let's bring in that last one. So let's go here and let's grab the last image, which would be the swamp here, I think. Is that right? Let's make sure. Yep. Okay, so we throw the swamp in here, the last layer for our images. Press Control V to bring it in. Make sure it's at zero zero coordinates X and Y. So it matches up to the other guy's position. Now we go out to frame 160. Press F6. Create motion tween. Make sure this one is alpha zero on frame 130. So now you can see how that would frame. This uh, will fade into the swamp picture. The little house picture there, or the little square, little city, would fade into the swamp. Now you just make the swamp last 50 frames. 160 to, what is it, 210. Press F6, and then 240, press F6. And here we know we have to fade it out. So let's go to alpha. 0, create motion tween, and now it fades out. But we have to bring the first one back in, remember? So press F6 here on that image 1 layer, F6 here, create motion tween there, and let's lock this layer so we don't grab that one by accident. Let's just make it where you can't see it. Now let's make this guy alpha 100, nope, alpha 0, then 100 on 240. So it fades back in, that one fades out, Let's go ahead and unlock that. There you see it. Swamp fades out, and the original fades back in. Loops back around. Starts all over. Let's render out. There it is. Fading in and out. It's very simple to do. You can do this with text, uh, words, movie clips, sentences. I do this all the time in headers of websites I make. I'll, I'll take a few key sentences key slogans that the people want to use for their business and I'll create movie clips. I'll right click them, make them movie clips just like they were these pictures and fade them in and out just like that. Okay now I'm gonna show you the code that you can use to make it to where if the user's mouse were to go over that movie clip, that main container, it would stop and it would pause the image for the user to look at for an extended period of time. And then when they move their mouse over it, or away from it, I'll show you how to make the movie clip resume back to fading in and out. Which is a really cool effect. You see a lot of websites doing that. Okay, so let's go back to scene one. And I'm not going to show you the, the single layer transition technique in this tutorial. It would just, it would take a little too long. 
maybe in another one if you guys really want to know how but I think the layering out your images on separate layers is a much cleaner nicer method so just use that one and then uh, so here we have layer one let's just call this container clip is what's living on that layer and then make a new layer and call it action script and I think I put an action script layer in here and I don't need it the only time you would need an action script layer in here is if you wanted it to like stop dead right there or something you can press F9 type in a stop action and you'll see if I render out it'll stop dead right in between the fade bam you see that so that's how you can manipulate that but we're not going to so let's delete that layer we're gonna manipulate it from here okay so now all we need is the code set up here in this uh, keyframe that'll control this container and we're gonna like I said we're gonna make it to where the user's mouse goes over it it pauses so they can look at a picture for an extended amount of time and the user's mouse goes away from it it'll resume from the point that they that it was at it'll resume from the point that it was when the user's mouse went over it to pause it in the first place okay now the code to pull this off is so simple we're just gonna add an event listener for mouse over and mouse out make little functions for it and that's it so let's make the first little function so uh, sorry what I did there was highlight my action script layer press F9 to open my actions panel and I'm typing in code that's gonna affect that movie clip so function let's name this one stop the fade so stop fade this is event colon mouse event close up the parenthesis let me spell this right open the curly bracket close the curly brace and then uh, inside of that stop fade function we're just gonna simply say container dot stop that's it tell you that was easy now for the next function let's just copy that one go a couple lines down say container play and that'll make it resume so let's name this function resume fade now all we need is a couple of little event listeners and we're done so let's say container dot add event listener the reason why let's see we have to name this thing first or this code won't work let's highlight it on stage down in the, the instance name properties uh, panel for the instance name under the movie clip type in container keep it simple you can name it whatever you want really now the code will connect to it so container dot add event listener open close parenthesis hit the semicolon now in between the parentheses let's type in mouse event dot mouse over all caps on this underscore over and now all we need is the function name stop fade put that right here and let's just copy that real quick put it one line down and this is going to be mouse out that we want here and this is going to be resume fade so let's just type in resume now we have that event listener is connected to this function and we'll fire this function off whenever this event is met now whenever this event is met with the mouse over it'll fire off this function to stop the container from uh, fading in and out so let's test it out hopefully everything go right okay there it is and we see it's fading in and out now let's put my mouse on it in mid fade see you can still see the church back there and the, the diner and if I mouse out it'll resume and it'll stay on a picture for as long as I want as long as my mouse is on it it'll stay on that picture and not fade in and out and then when I move my mouse off the movie clip resumes and it's that simple it's that easy you see how it's in mid-fade and I stopped it, see? 
And so I think that's everything you need to know about it. This is a really cool trick, catching the user's eye and engaging your users and making a cooler site. Okay, we'll see you guys next lesson.